Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 99th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 39th episode of Season 2 titled Rangers Back in Time Part 1. At Angel Grove High, each student has brought in a childhood photograph to share a memorable moment from that age. Aisha has a photo of her from her first dance recital and she got to perform for her sick grandmother there. Kim is next with a photo of her in her first gymnastics competition, which she lost, but it taught her to be a good sport. Zed sees this and he goes, the Rangers met Zordon as teenagers. If we turn back time, they'll be powerless. Thanks to the Rock of Time, they're going to do this. And let's be clear here, it's literally called the Rock of Time. Tommy is next with a photo from one of his first karate matches. Billy shows a photo of him trying to put back together his mother's vacuum. Rocky has a photo of him with a dog which apparently taught him responsibility because Rocky is just that damn vanilla. Adam has a photo with his dad. Hulk and Skull have a photo of them as children showing that they've been friends for a stupid long time. Zed is done watching this stupid episode, making a literal random rock just glow. Apparently the earth is going to start spinning back in time because Superman logic is real. The clock are starting to go backward in class too. Billy notices this and he mentions it to Miss Appleby and that's when I notice that there's a literal 45 year old sitting next to Billy. Zed zaps the rock again, speeding things up. Alpha sees that this is happening and he watches the Power Rangers on the viewing globe as well as on Earth and now the Rangers are all children and Miss Appleby has long red hair while Rocky has a damn mullet. Kim gets up and solves a math problem and there's something with bulk and skull and a shaving cream filled balloon that pops in their face. Honestly, I don't care. This has turned into the worst version of the first season of Boy Meets World. Class is dismissed. They're going to the park. Alpha and Zordon see what's going on and they know exactly what happened somehow. Alpha starts to build a device to bring the rangers back to normal and he even suggests to just teleport them to the command center. But Zordon says, no, that would probably freak them out. At the park, Aisha is dancing for Kim in a non-creepy way, and Billy and Adam are flying a kite while Rocky and Tommy are literally still sparring. A couple with a Polaroid camera were about to take a photo of the kids, like, freaking creeps. And then they're scared by Bulk and Skull, leaving their camera behind. Then Bulk takes Billy's kite, and then they all end up being tied up in the kite's string. This was not the content I came for, Power Rangers. Goldar says he's sending down putties for absolutely no reason. The six kids are playing with a dodgeball when a putty comes flying in, grabbing the ball. They surround the six kids, and they also show up around Bulk and Skull, freaking them out. In true Adam fashion, he offers to let the putties play with them. But it turns violent as a creepy putty hand is flying around, coming for them. It's extremely pedophilic. Rocky decides to start fighting back and he even hits one with a dodgeball. Then Tommy takes the dodgeball and throws it, destroying one by hitting the Z. Now they're all aiming for the Z with the dodgeball, destroying all the putties. Alpha is still working on his device and Zed is mad that the six kids are still good fighters. He decides to create a new monster, the Photo Mare, made from the dropped Polaroid camera. Bulk and Skull are following the six others slowly, but then the six are turned into a photograph by Photo Mare. Alpha is still working on this damn device, and now he gets zapped to freaking Kingdom Come. Zoran sees what's happened to the Rangers, and Zed thinks that he's finally won. To be continued. To say this episode is painful is a vast understatement. It's almost so painful I wish I didn't even have to watch it at all. There's so much padding and forcing things to fit into the 19 minutes allotted, it's insane. Theoretically, it's not a bad plot idea at all, but the execution is so terrible. So terrible. Plus, the child actors are horrific, even by child actor standards. It's a shame, but like, what can you do? Next time, this two-parter is hopefully put out of its own misery, but until then, may the power protect you.